Hello people, my name is Liam, and one of my favorite parts of this craft of painting models and miniatures is creating custom color schemes. Today I'll be providing some practical color theory advice, as well as explaining my thought process for when I'm figuring out which colors to use for my custom color schemes. Now as you're probably aware or can uh, figure out, my experience is mostly with hand painting, gunpla, and wargaming miniatures, but you should be able to apply the knowledge I impart to you in this video to a variety of situations. As I'm discussing my perspective on this topic, I'm going to be hand painting in Model Mayhem style with a bit of a twist, this LBX Pandora model kit, as well as a batch of 100 Kingdoms miniatures. So without further ado, as they say, let's get into it. I've mentioned before how much I enjoy the process of selecting and figuring out where I'm going to apply colors to models, especially when it comes to Mecha with all their armor panels. It's uh, kind of like a really difficult coloring book. Before I get into fully custom color schemes though, let's take a step back. Why customize your models in the first place? And where should you start? Well, with miniatures, it's kind of implied that you should paint them, being that they're usually just gray plastic out of the box, and said box will typically have photos and or artwork with the on-brand color scheme. With models like Gunpla from Bandai, the plastic is already colored, and usually all you need to do aside from building it is apply some stickers. Maybe some panel lining if you're feeling fancy. But in mine, and probably many other builders' opinions, painted will always look better than the bare plastic, even if you don't change any of the original colors. Coloring your models according to the official box art is a great way to start if you're new to painting, don't want to come up with your own ideas, or even just a fan of what the original creators designed. Furthermore, a lot of the time there will be an official painting guide provided in the box or online. When I'm painting according to the box art, I don't usually go for the exact paint called for by the company's recipe and just wing it with what I have readily available. I do this with my Seraphon models, where the overall look is consistent with Games Workshop's presentation, but I don't fret over getting the exact details right. And I did the same with this Iron-Blooded Orphans diorama that I painted according to a variety of art and stills from the anime. A lot of box art is good, actually, and worth copying, in fact. Have you seen my wall? Even if you're just copying a color scheme that someone else came up with, the pure satisfaction of beholding a mini that you painted all by yourself is quite worth it. You can still find ways to be creative here though, by breaking the rules of the official scheme in minor ways, like I did with my Scorn by changing the rope color to turquoise for a bit more contrast, or my Goof that remains the iconic blue but in a darker shade and with more black armor panels across the model. And you can take this idea even further, like with my Signar army, where I changed the main faction color from blue to purple, but maintained the faction logo's yellow identity. If box art doesn't pique your interest, and you don't necessarily want to start from scratch, there's nothing stopping you from copying colors from literally anything else. My real grade high new Gundam's colors were based off the Tachikoma robots from Ghost in the Shell. The master grade Buster Gundam's kit bash color scheme came from Jack and Daxter, the video game characters, and the Monster Energy Marines and Red Bull God Gundam came from energy drinks. And of course, we can't forget the humble little Pop Tart artifact Nightingale. You can also base your entire color scheme around slopping dollar store glitter paint all over your models. With all those projects I just listed, there were still ways I found to play around within the initial idea and add some new colors into the mix, so there really is a lot of room for creativity within these constraints that you might give yourself. Hopefully I've provided you with a solid foundation from which to start applying color to your models and or miniatures. And now, before moving into discussing fully customized color schemes, I'd like to provide just a bit of advice regarding painting materials. First of all, if you're looking for advice on getting started with painting in general, I've got this video from a couple years ago where I break down the basics that you can check out, and I was also a guest over on Plamotherapist's channel last year where he put together a great video about getting started with hand painting Gunpla. I do pretty much all my hand painting with water-based acrylics designed for model painting, such as Vallejo, Model, and Game Color. And these kinds of paints work well for hand painting as they are not as harsh on brushes and you can easily mix and match different brands together. 
If you're new to model painting, most starter sets have a good spread to get you started, and beyond that I would just pick up single paints as needed depending on what project you're painting, or you can aim to gradually fill out the rainbow of your specific collection. However, if you're a high roller, go ahead and get one of those mega paint sets if you like. Your hobby, your way. For mini painting, I find I'm often using a lot of different brown tones, and for both minis and gunpla, it's nice to have at least three different metallics. Whether you go with the official paint guides that brands like Bandai and Games Workshop provide for those box art color schemes or not, there is so much paint out there, so just go with the brand that fits your needs and budget best. The more you practice and experiment, the better sense for what types of paint you prefer to work with you'll get. If you're going to be painting a number of models utilizing the same colors, like my first two Gamma Wolf's crews with their turquoise bases, glow effects, and black highlights, I highly recommend you get extra bottles of those paints if you can. Color matching across different brands or updated paint lines, it is possible, but it's still annoying and worth avoiding if you're able to. I've enjoyed P3 paints and secret weapon washes on a variety of projects before, and now I'm unable to get those materials from my local store. Please, if anyone out there has a bottle of secret weapon sewer water wash, please contact me. My Spires army needs your help. If you're not super confident about picking your own colors, there are free apps available to lay out your ideas in ways where it may be easier to tell if they'll work well together or not. It's also popular among Gunpla builders to obtain blank line art of the mobile suit they're wishing to color and mock up their ideas on the screen before applying any paint. I also have a selection of throwaway miniatures that I don't use for gaming or display that I'll sometimes use to test out paints, so that can be a useful method to work out whether your paint scheme is going to work before starting the actual project. It's particularly useful for determining what the finish of a particular paint is going to look like when it's on an actual model. One last note for this section is regarding varnishes. Most of the time I prefer a matte top coat to reduce shininess, but at certain times I will selectively apply gloss varnish to areas that I want to stand out more and increase the overall contrast. Now it's time to discuss creating color schemes from the ground up while finishing the LBX Pandora and Hundred Kingdoms miniatures. I'm assuming a lot of you have probably come across a color wheel before or have a basic understanding of color theory at the very least, and I'm trying to keep this video as concise as I reasonably can, so I'm not going to get too academic about the subject. Knowing the color wheel methodology, like how complementary colors across from each other provide the strongest contrast, how a triad can give you a greater range of contrast, and any other possible combinations of colors will give you a great solid foundation to figure out which direction to go with your scheme, and it's also quite useful for interpreting the work of other artists, so you can get an idea of how they come up with their own color scheme decisions. But with any creative work, especially if you're doing it for yourself, it can be okay to break the rules and go with what feels good in your gut, so don't get too attached to these systems. If you're truly concerned about your color choices, you can always ask people whose opinions you trust for honest feedback. Furthermore, everyone's eyes perceive color differently, with some people having color blindness to varying degrees. I'm not colorblind myself, so I don't feel like I have the authority to speak on this subject. But thankfully, there is a ton of free information online regarding everything from painting with color blindness to advanced color theory, so I encourage you to maintain a hungry mind and keep exploring after watching this video. Or you could be a nerd and read a book. Like me. When I'm coming up with a custom scheme, I typically start with the first color that's going to be applied after priming. For my 100 Kingdoms army, it's model color bronze. For the Spires, it's model color red leather. And for most of my Gumpla projects, it's some kind of metallic shifter paint. I can plan the rest of the colors according to what works alongside this foundation. Neutral gray metallic underframes definitely look great on mecha models, but uh, I prefer how using a shifter paint gives you an actual color tone to work around. So typically after laying down that foundation color, often with the airbrush, I'll then choose one color to be the most prominently featured one across the model, with everything else acting as a complement or a contrast. And this is also where you'll be deciding how much color variation you want to have overall. 
Sometimes you can add more subtle color variation with the tones you choose for the highlighting and shading, like how I often choose to highlight the black armor of my mecha models with more of a cool gray or turquoise tone. There are some other aspects factoring into your color scheme that are easy to overlook, such as the wash or panel liner used to shade the recess details. A lot of the time a basic black will do the trick, but it's worth considering whether that armor might look a bit more interesting with a gray or even red panel lining. Conversely, if you're opting to stain the entire surface with a wash instead, you may want to exclude it from certain areas that may be harmed by having that darker look, or consider how a strong shading across the entire model can tie disparate colors together. The spires, as I mentioned before, start with red leather, then after plenty of dry brushed bone tones and some secondary details, get unified together with the sewer water wash. I didn't want a highly varied scheme for this army because their lore and playstyle has a kind of evil necromantic horde vibe to it, but I was able to find just the right amount of extra contrast with the cool grey stone look for the weapons and various bits of metallic shifter paint details and turquoise cloth. With my Hundred Kingdoms, I wanted to evoke more of a historical feudal force that has been mustered across the various lands of the Lord's Domain, but then I also had the idea to relate my color choices to the light, medium, and heavy classes that each regiment in the game has. Therefore, I made bronze, white, and generic browns and blacks the main colors that would be present on every mini, and then depending on what I was painting, the remaining complementary colors were green for the light regiments, blue for medium, purple for heavy, and red for characters. Within this system, I still have room for creativity, like by applying a couple dashes of red to some of the officer and leader model kit bashes. Now that I've executed the ideas for each of these armies, it is quite satisfying to display them against each other on the battlefield. Two different color scheme methodologies, but with the same style of basing. The basing for your model may also be more important than you think. Granted, viewers' eyes will be drawn more towards the model standing upon it, but you still want to make sure that whatever colors are present on the base, if your model has one, are considered as part of the overall scheme. If you've watched my previous Gamma Wolves Gunpla project videos, you've probably heard me describe how for the bases I was going for the look of a video game character selection screen. And with the third crew I'm currently working on, I'm still doing that, but I've updated the idea to also incorporate front side and rear facing arcs to work alongside various tabletop game systems. When discussing groups of models, from a handful of Mecha and a Gamma Wolves crew to an entire wargaming army, Maintaining consistent basing will go a long way in making everything seem greater than the sum of its parts. Moving on to my hand-painted gunpla examples, they all have at least one thing in common, which is the complementary armor panel tone of black. Originally, I think this was because I was mostly basing all the color schemes around one main color, but I didn't want to have the entirety of the model's armor be the same color, so I used black to break it up a bit. And as I painted more gunpla for Gamma Wolves, I broke away from this style a bit by adding more color variation across the armor, like with the Buster and Wing Zero kit bashes, but I still maintained the secondary black armor panels, both because I wanted everything to look good together in their respective crews, but also because I just prefer the look of having the black in there to break up the patterns. I've also found that choosing a strongly contrasting color for the glowing sections across my Gunpla models, like the eyes and thrusters, has proved to be quite effective in tying together their overall schemes. When I started experimenting with freehand painting techniques on my Gunpla last year, I took a step back towards having less color variation. I figured that having multiple colors of armor panels alongside all the extra details would look too busy but I had a new way of playing around with that variation via the colors chosen to do the freehand designs with. With the LBX Pandora I've been painting in this video, I applied familiar Model Mayhem style techniques, but wanted to experiment with the freehand by using two layers of metallics, followed by a heavy glazing to blend it in with the blue armor. 
Hopefully everything I've discussed so far gives you a good idea of the variety of approaches I take when picking which colors to paint my models and miniatures. Every time I'm selecting my colors, I'm always utilizing my synthesized knowledge of color theory with past experience of my own painting and observation of other artists' work. Sometimes this manifests as just going with the flow and picking what I think looks pleasing, and sometimes it's a more regimented and planned approach. Overall, the best advice I can give is to not be afraid to make mistakes and just do plenty of experimenting, as it's the best way to learn and improve, and really the only way to discover your own personal painting style. Please leave a comment if there's anything I didn't address that you're curious about, or if you have any of your own color wisdom to share. If there are a lot of questions or a strong desire for more in-depth educational content, I will consider that for my future uploads. A while ago on my Patreon, I made a poll to see what kind of color schemes my patrons like the most, and in hindsight it makes sense that the broadest category of three or more colors would get the most votes, but it was cool to see the second place go to schemes based around only one color. If you'd like to participate in future polls, or watch any of the exclusive vlogs I've made in between YouTube uploads while also greatly supporting my endeavors, consider donating to patreon.com slash millennialmodelmayhem. Join the ranks of these fine sprinkles and experience benefits such as priority messaging, HD wallpapers, behind the scenes updates, and more. If you're feeling extra generous, you can become a mayhem machine alongside Moosepelheim and Doodlebopped, or you can join the GOG hand with Country Fried Minis, Janelle, and Sukasa WM. <coughs> if you want to donate but Patreon isn't your thing, I have the link for my Ko-Fi page down in the description, and there's also always the option to do a YouTube super thanks. But of course, if you can't or don't want to support me monetarily, that is totally fine. I still very much appreciate the good old YouTube engagement with the likes, comment, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media, and probably most importantly of all, watch more of my videos. Links for everything will be in the description, as well as some affiliate shopping links that you can check out if you're interested. Thank you all very much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end like this, and rest assured that the long gap in between uploads will not be as long for my next video. So with that, I will say good luck with your coloring and see you next time.